the New York football giants who upset the Seattle Seahawks 17 to 12 yesterday in a dominant defensive performance and a workmanlike offensive performance that was able to overcome another rough day for special teams for the second week in a row. But we'll get to that a little bit later of more importance is the fact that the defense really put the clamps on Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf and company. What a game plan. What a game plan. Patrick Graham and that staff put together to put basically a net over that pocket. Um, One thing that I saw yesterday that was lovely to my eyes and ears was that when any time that Russell Wilson wanted to get out of that pocket where he does that little spin move, there was a guy right next to him. And that was by design. And those guys were disciplined in their rush lanes and a great, great, great game plan. And they executed it perfectly on a tough place to go. Remember, the Seahawks had not lost at home at all this season. They were 5-0 and going into that game. We could start uh, talking about this defense in a number of ways, Jeff. So I'm going to let you pick the order. We could very easily Let's go top talk... to bottom. Uh, well, I was just going to front. say, if you want to go back to front... Well, then you got to start with the secondary and mm-hmm. a terrific game by Jabril Peppers. And I also thought that Bradbury and Yadam uh, did their share of the work. Uh, Holmes also came up with a couple of big plays. I mean, everywhere you look, it was, it was bouquets of flowers to everybody. But mm-hmm. let's start with the secondary and the fact that they did not allow outside of that one touchdown pass to Carson where I think there might have been a busted coverage. Other than that, they did not get gouged by this passing game. Yeah, and you knew you knew Metcalf was going to have some plays, right? I mean, the guys, it's only natural that he's going to get them. Um, but I think these guys were just, they were blanketed. I mean, there was nowhere to go for Russell Wilson. And, you know, and that trickles down. It trickles down to the linebackers and the defensive ends and the defensive linemen that, you know, be able to get in there and get some pressure on them. But they played well. They played physical. That's what I liked about those guys yesterday. They were physical. They were around the ball. They were making good hits. Jabril Peppers is, is such a, a fun player to watch. You know, he is very physical. He's fast, um, and he loves to tackle, and he's all around the football. But I think that those guys are just, you know, they're getting better and better every week. But, boy, did they play an outstanding game yesterday that gave those guys up front a chance to against Russell Wilson. So Wilson threw 27 completions on 43 attempts. He was sacked five times. Uh, Giants also dropped a couple of interceptions, believe it or not. But one of the numbers that I really liked a lot here, besides the 10 quarterback hits, is the seven passes defensed. And that's what you're talking about with the physicality, Jeff, Mm -hmm. because they were arriving on time and knocking that ball loose. Yeah. Yeah, there was a couple times when it was just not only just one person, but there was two or three guys around the football. Exactly. You know, one guy going high, one guy going low, and one guy going after the football. And especially that last pass of the game. I mean, look at that. That was, you know, those things are just, they're jump balls. But, you know, those guys wanted it more than the Seahawks did. And they went up there. I mean, Julian Love, he was up there. Wasn't he? Man, oh, man. I I thought he was on stilts. (laughs) There was a picture I saw on Twitter Twitter or something this morning when I was doing a little bit of reading about the game. And there's a picture, a still picture of him and Bradbury. Those guys are up there. I mean, they are up there. It's a great, great shot. And, um, you know, a great play to end a, a perfect game for those guys. Okay, you said you wanted to go from the back to the front, so now we have to go to the linebackers. Uh, update on Blake Martinez. Uh, left the game with a sore back in the fourth quarter. Coach Joe Judd said today a lot of bumps and bruises and nicks, but he doesn't think there's anything serious. Wants to wait till the guys come back on the plane later on today. They did sleep overnight in Seattle and got treatment would like to see to make sure that nobody has any inflammation with their injuries as they get back to New Jersey uh, later on this afternoon. Now, uh, uh, of interest with this linebacking core is that we knew they were coming in depleted. But Martinez, of course, another double-digit tackle day and then supplemented by a Rubik's Cube of guys who (laughs) all made plays. Crowder, uh, we're talking about Sheard. We're talking about, you know, Mayo was in there for some snaps. Carter Coughlin had a ton of snaps and was effective and always around the pocket. And, oh, my goodness, Nico Lalos, are are you serious? (laughs) Two games played, and he's already got two takeaways. (laughs) And, And please don't let me forget that Cam Brown, 
also mm-hmm. had some pressure on the pocket as well and made his presence felt. And and I guess the only guy I'm leaving off on this list is Downs, but he also contributed a couple of tackles. This linebacking core, under the radar going into the game, Young made a bunch of plays. Young. Think about that. Think about those guys you just named off. I mean, Martinez is the oldest guy of them. I mean, um, and then I think, you know, Carter played a good game yesterday, Coughlin. He really did. He he was a guy that really was disciplined in those rush lanes that I talk about, you know, getting in there and, and really keeping him in the pocket. That's uh, Russell Wilson. Um, but all those guys, Paul, like you said, are just they're learning on the run and they're learning to play football at this level. And, you know, they're getting great coaches. Um, I was actually texting back and forth with Coach Bielema, who I've become pretty good friends with, and he was telling me a little bit about those guys yesterday. He says, you know, it's just a, it's a, every week is different. You know, we don't know who's going to be up, who's going to be down, who's hurt, who's not, and uh, they're just playing their butts off, and they're just a great group of kids, he called them. All right, last unit on defense is up front, and, you know, <laughs> I, I'm never going to get tired of talking about this guy because, you know, I've, I've been a fan of his since day one when they got him in the deal from the Jets last year. Leonard Williams, as Coach Judge said after the game yesterday, he's just a dude. He's a man. Man. Dude's a man. a man. Dude's a man. He's a man. Man, man. <laughs> yeah, all over the place. All over the place, and good for him. Um you know, and, and not only, you know, these teams got to pay attention to him, and he's still getting through double, you know, double teams, um, just just doing a heck of a job. And that frees up a lot of the other guys to make plays too, and Dexter Lawrence and, um, you know, Thomas and all those guys are just playing at a level that this defense, we never thought at this juncture um, coming into the season that they would have this much success. I promise you nobody did. No one thought that they would have this type of success. Now, I think as we were going on earlier in the season and moving forward to where we were, to where we're at now, Paul, I think we talked about how the Dolphins improved last year under Patrick Graham. Um, And we were hoping that we would see that type of improvement out of the Giants defense, and we certainly have. Um, You know, and so I don't want to go on the offense yet, but, you know, collectively – we talked about it on the pregame show yesterday that going forward, this defense, this team is going to have to lean on the defense. And they certainly did yesterday, and they stepped up and won a game where you have your backup quarterback in there just asking them not to make mistakes. I mean, the one tipped interception, a little bit of both there, right? I mean, um, and we'll get on the offense in a second. But defensively, absolutely a gem. Absolutely a gem. Two takeaways, uh, five sacks, and um, – just continue to play at a high level. Love it. Williams, two and a half of those sacks had five quarterback hits. Mm-hmm. And maybe, just maybe, he's starting to, uh, I don't know, do, do we do we fit him for a cowl yet? Is he a Batman? Whew, he's getting real close to starting to be one. I mean, he doesn't have double-digit sacks yet, but it looks like he will by the time this season is over. Uh, I usually kind of reserve Batman uh, connotations for guys who get upwards of 13, 14. You know, w- once you break that dozen barrier, mm-hmm. that to me makes you a Batman. 100%, but the way Leonard yeah. Williams is playing right now, boy, does he look like he's got a cowl on. Yeah. Yeah, I look at, you know, he's got eight and a half. Isn't that what he's at now? Eight and a half That's sacks. what he's at. So remember, Marcus Golden last year had 10. Yeah, but he was and, not a Batman. That's 10 doesn't do so, it. Where I'm getting at is that I look at the eight and a half sacks that that Leo has, and then I look at the 10 that Marcus Golden has, and there's so much more impactual play out of Leonard Williams than I ever saw out of Marcus Golden. Yeah, you know? they've been bigger plays and bigger moments. Yeah, I, and, I would uh, agree He plays the run extremely well. Um, and what's what's really nice, if you've if got to listen to Coach Judge's press conference about him last night, he's a guy that everybody loves in the locker room. He's always smiling. Um, and that he is just, you know, a pleasure to be around that facility. And that's something that the Giants are going to have to look at going forward because this is a this is a show-me year for him, right? I mean, they franchise him, and we'll see what happens going forward with him, but he's certainly putting out uh, a nice resume and a display of his talent. Um, the guy's going to get paid whether it's here or somewhere else, that's for sure. Big Blue Kickoff Live is presented by New York Lottery. The New York Lottery has released their seasonal scratch-off games once again. Head to your nearest retailer for the chance to win up to $500,000. Please gift responsibly. Uh, Quickly, let's do the offense and then a moment on specials before we get to the phone calls. We will get to you in just a short time, fans. I know you really want to talk about this ballgame. But offensively, 
uh, yeah, we could we could start with Colt McCoy because he was the guy in place of Daniel Jones. But I think we need to begin with Wayne Gallman. <laughs> yeah, how about it? Well, hey, Wayne Gallman just does what he's supposed to do. Um, and he's very patient. I mean, that running game in the first half was not very good. Um, and they just they made some adjustments at halftime, which continues to amaze me that these co- this coaching staff can, can do that in, a, in, a, in 12 minutes of a halftime and come out and execute it. But he's a patient runner, him and Alfred Morris. And, uh, but he just consistently is, is getting your positive yards, and he's got that burst. Um, and, you know, you're not going to get that type of running ability if you don't have it in front of you which we'll talk about. But those guys are, you know, they're blocking for him. But Wayne Gallman continues to run um, like he's trying to prove that he can play in this league. And whether it's with this team or another team or whatever, you know, you talk about Saquon, what's going to happen with Wayne Gallman? But, you know, you know, is anybody, you've got to have two really good running backs in this league. You really do. Um, just because of what happened this year. So Wayne Gallman, I'm happy and proud of him. And I, I think he's done just an outstanding job. And Alfred Morris is a nice changeup. Great. Can you believe that that's the first touchdown pass that he's caught in his career? In his NFL career, that's correct. That is ridiculous. It really <laughs> is when you think about it. <laughs> I mean, of course, I mean, 2012 it's kind of ridiculous it? when you think about the fact that his career was basically given up on by by everybody in the league, and the Giants brought him back, you know, for lack of a better description, off the sofa. <laughs> yeah. And and look what he's doing. I mean, yeah. these two drives back to back. Scoring drives for the Giants. This is really where they took command of this game. Yeah. Uh, midway third quarter, uh, second and seven from the 23. Goldman on a 60-yard run. Key blocks, okay, key blocks by Lemieux, Smith, Thomas, Toilolo, and Austin Mack. Yeah. Boy, do I love Austin Mack. This yeah. guy is always throwing a key block on a key run every single Sunday even when he doesn't get thrown uh, and he passes his way. First down at the 17, Morris for 13 behind left guard, uh, gets key blocks there, also, believe it or not, by the two tight ends, Smith and Evan Ingram throwing key blocks on that run. And then Morris on the touchdown, first and goal, four yards in. Uh, it is Toilolo and Lemieux who clear the way. Uh, that's exactly how you draw it up. And then after they are able to hold Seattle on a fourth and one, thanks to pressure by Carter Coughlin on Russell Wilson, okay, forcing an incompletion. And by the way, Yadam in coverage on Carson did a nice job too. Let's not forget Yadam has really come out of nowhere and, and done a great job for this team recently. Giants take over at the Seahawks 48, three yards for Goldman, 13 yards for Goldman. 23 yards for Goldman, key blocks by Lemieux, Gates, and Zeitler. First and goal at the eight, Morris up the middle for a couple, and then Morris on the six-yard rolling touchdown catch to the right side, and the Giants are up 14-5. to five. And to be honest with you, that to me, right there, those two drives, and include the fourth down stop, that's the statement that the Giants made to Seattle that said, "Hey fellas, we're going to be here and we're in this game. Mm-hmm. Don't 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 think that you're going to get through a walk in the park cuz we're here and we're going to be here." And, and don't forget about the two-point conversion too. It was sure. a great play. So, yeah, that offensive lineman, they they had a, you know, they they had a their motive was to, you know, win the line of scrimmage because that was a third rushing defense in the National Football League and the Giants were able to put up 190 yards on them. Um, but they were going with that heavy, heavy personnel. And, you know, once uh, those guys got in there. I love it, love baby. It. Jeff, I Jeff, you could um, you have imagined the smile on my face when I saw them running power stuff? Yeah. It's oh, kind of, baby. It, on, and on TV, it looks it looks like there's 35 people on either the right or the left side of the line of scrimmage when they go to that. It's insane how how many, how many big guys they have over there, um, which sets up a lot of, you know, you could tell that they like to run to that left side. And that that's a, a testament to... Lemieux, who is, continues to play very, very at a high level. Thomas, too. And um, and Thomas, too. Yeah, in fact, that the 60-yard run, if you look on the replay, he's out there. Thomas is out there in front of all the linemen. I um, listed him. I listed him. And everybody everybody ran past him. But um, Jamal Adams, 
my goodness, what a football player. Whoa, man. That guy is really good. He, he brings it every play. He is just an outstanding, outstanding well, And he player. had a terrific game, but he couldn't do it himself. And nope. that's in, in part because foot injury or not, Carlos Dunlap, who I really thought in conjunction with Adams, could yeah, pose a, a huge problem for the Giants. Dunlap was virtually invisible. Wound up with only one tackle on 23 snaps. Yeah, Didn't get near the quarterback. Uh, again, could have been partly because of his sore foot, but sure. Thomas, uh, Fleming, Parrott, whoever he was trying to run up against, because he was he did flop, he did take snaps on both sides, he could not do anything. And so they were down to a one-man pass rush, and that was Jamal Adams. And that was a very significant portion of why the Giants were able to methodically win this game with Colt McCoy as a game manager you mentioned the numbers on the running game, but I do want to mention Goldman's numbers in particular. Uh, 16 carries for 135 yards, obviously setting the career high uh, in yardage. And uh, so the Giants, you know, played clean football. The one tip pass that was picked off by Adams. Again, uh, Evan Ingram got to clean those things up. Uh, it's it's getting very, very frustrating to watch a guy who later on made a big first down catch mm -hmm. in the final few minutes of the game. Very frustrating. Um, you know, got to clean those things up. All right, we're going to go to the phones in just one more minute. I Bro, do want to remind people. Teams. Yeah, well, that's what I want to do. Hmm. I want to remind people that special teams, <laughs> which, again, had been great until last week, suffered another bruised game this week in Seattle. Hmm. 